and a rematch of last year's Supers in Knoxville. And the first offering, 67 miles per hour, 1-0. and Vols won that first game of the series 5-2. Ashley Rogers, their ace last year, who has since graduated, won that game. And then Peyton Gottschall pitched a gem in game two of that series. Peyton took the loss earlier tonight. Kiki Malloy is tied with Megan Gregg on the uh, home run career chart in Knoxville, 57 each. And uh, she is uh, coming off of an unprecedented performance, four strikeouts in the Stanford loss. Swings and misses for Sit Lally. And that's been the area to go after Kiki Malloy. And what we saw Stanford attack her on is middle in, trying to get in on the hands. Kiki Malloy, one of the toughest hitters in the country, to get out. Two two, slow roller right back to Gutierrez. One down. Gutierrez likes to spin on off-speed curve ball. You can just see the, the way she tightens that up. Giving Kiki Malloy a little bit of a hard time on that first at bat. Raleigh West will step in out of Eastvale, California. Boy, is Mike White gonna have a lot of options in the circle, as you mentioned at the top, Smitty. Everybody's back for this deep pitching staff, and they've added one of the best Rookies in the country in Tegan Kavan. I don't know if anybody was better in opening weekend than Texas was going 5 and 0, scoring 64 runs and blasting UCLA. Yeah, and Kavan got the start at UCLA. Nothing like throwing the freshman in <laughs> saying, here you go. But you know, I think it's confidence in his defense, but also confidence in that offense to put a lot of runs up on the board to protect that freshman in the circle. And, Five great arms. One one to West. Yeah. lally has got a couple of putouts. And that'll bring up now Boo Gibson. Number baseman, number 24, McKenna Gibson. We talk about complete different type of pitching. See, Kennedy <laughs> yeah. last game up at your eyes at 70. Now a lot of down at the knees. Well, that's why coaches and players, they love the challenge of a tournament like this where, you know, you're probably playing a couple of double headers on a Saturday and a Sunday or a Friday, Saturday, and you're seeing a variety of pitchers coming at you. Up through the right side, base hit. To chance of boo from the dugout. Boo Gibson, nice job letting this ball travel. I think a lot of times, especially, they're coming right off another game with a lot of velocity. Now down at the knees, just pokes that one through. Sophia Nugent. Somewhat familiar with Texas after tra uh, transferring from Oklahoma. And now rolling into the starting lineup for the Lady Vols. She's at, uh, she's catching tonight. <laughs> she had one of their hits in the Stanford game earlier. I didn't have many. A little split grip here. Strike at the top of the zone. One and two. Strike 
Yes! At 72 to 76 miles an hour, a lot of velo. She was a terrific sidekick last year for Ashley Rogers, the SEC Freshman of the Year. And now ready to step into a bigger role along with Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Should be a terrific one-two punch for uh, the preseason favorites in the SEC just ahead of Georgia and LSU. Oh, by the way, they have both of those series at home this year. There's Bella Dayton. There's that screwball that she can give a little twist to the wrist and get that almost like a scry, so a screwball that's gonna rise and climb up, and then she can also bring that thumb down and, and make it climb or, or fall, I should say, toward the dirt. Actually, a good look at those two pitches. Yeah. Same side of the plate, but two yep. different directions. Yeah. And when it's coming 73 to 75 miles an hour, I mean, you don't have a lot of time to pick up which direction it's going to go. Dayton gets through the 5 6 hole. And the leadoff for the senior out of Wiley, Texas. How about this, too, with so two strikes, and you know, okay, she's going this side of the plate. This is like a half swing, 60%. I'm just going to meet this ball because you're bringing the velocity, five, six holes open. You got yourself a knock. Mia Scott will hit in the two spot. All Big 12 performer last year. Mia hit 533 opening weekend in Southern California. Yeah, I was putting together my scorecard, Bimo, talking about <laughs> last weekend. A 458 batting average in weekend number one. <laughs> I mean. I think everybody was 400 or better. <laughs> yeah, gaudy. Four of their five games, they scored double-digit runs last weekend. Scott reaches for it. The only play for Gibson is at first. Dayton advances to second. It's good as a sacrifice. Here's the batting order for Texas. This is their opener here this weekend. They'll play Stanford still later tonight. Reese Atwood is one to watch her 12 RBI last weekend, number two in the nation. She was, in fact, the National Player of the Week, hitting 733 as she steps into the on-deck circle here. RBI opportunity for Katie Stewart, a member of uh, the second consecutive top 10 recruiting class for Mike White. That freshman crop showed up so well last year. These guys hoping to have a similar impact. Slow roller to third. Panel fires two down. How about the work of Pickens here, guys? Uh, Pickens, that arm side, super heavy, like we discussed. She can make that screwball come in it'll go up down a little bit but the other thing that it's really hard to identify from this this again these are outs is how effective she is with her changeup she has a very good changeup that she's used and as a freshman actually in all of NCAA last year division one she had the highest percentage of strikeouts on that changeup than any other pitcher in the country so it was pretty impressive so not only are you dealing with 76 miles an hour yeah you're dealing with a really good mix of speed So here's the matchup with Atwood. Opposite over the head of Nugent. And a run will score for Texas. The RBI double and Atwood's back continues to smoke. Well, and when you know the side of the plate, it's coming on. Watch Reese Atwood. Beautiful job of keeping her hands close to her body so that her barrel can get to this. Going opposite field on a pitch that's middle in, and Texas scores first. Good 
Another RBI opportunity. Here's Vivi Martinez. Atwood now on the season, by the way, is five for six with runners in scoring position and seven for eight when hitting with two outs. Clutch Jean. Her <laughs> slug over 1,400. I mean, <laughs> the numbers are just gaudy. The sophomore class, I mean, they, they made a statement last year. The numbers on Martinez already with a couple of home runs. Set a school freshman record last year with 52 RBI. On five home run balls, so she is already well ahead of schedule in terms of adding more power to her game. Here's a look at Mike White. Played for the national championship a couple of years ago. And a strikeout of Vivi, but a run in for Texas the Dish. Five, six, seven coming up for Tennessee. They got a base hit from Boo Gibson in the first. And then a strikeout of Nugent stranded her out there. Zeta Pooney. Texas fans may recall, she uh, she lit up the Longhorns last year in the Supers. And was fabulous throughout the NCAA tournament. She had a home run and four runs batted in in that series. And then Tennessee reached uh, the national semifinals. And a strikeout to get Pooney one down. Set Lally with her second strikeout of the evening. And she just goes in a lot of different directions. This is the off speed, so she can throw that drop ball, and then she'll mix in that off speed, and you can see it show up a little bit slower than Pooney was expecting it. And she gets her to swing through it, so it's that great rotation. It's a change of speed, but that great rotation down in the zone as well. Destiny Rodriguez. Such a great pitch against these type of swings, too, because they hunt low in the zone. They have that swing path that goes low to high. And so when they see drop ball, their eyes light up. She takes some off of it. It's hard to get to. And quickly goes 0-2. You really have to be patient against Gutierrez because she's going to, as a righty, and this is a righty-heavy lineup, She's going to throw you that drop on the outer half, so you really have to let that travel and then also identify the off speed out there as well. Wait, wait, wait. Just like that. There she goes. Wait, wait, wait. Run, run, run. Single for Destiny. And two strikes, too. This is what I love about it is pretty much number, eliminate number the lower season. half. Number Just poke this, seven. find a way to get this ball through. And that's what we've seen from the hits so far. Three, four hole, five, six hole on the reverse side. And you're right, Jess, 0-2 count. That needs to be off the plate a little bit more. First pitch swinging. And double play for the Texas defense. That'll erase the base hit. Texas offense, it's what they do, create chaos. They've got speed, they hit for average and power. Horn's got to run across in the first, and now back at it here in the second. Eight, nine, and one due up. <laughs> Jolie Mitchell. In her first year on the 40 acres. Transferring in from Notre Dame where she was all ACC last year. And a punch out for Pickens looking.
Now batting the second nice baseman, job of the rise ball, 11, especially when you get it to the top of the zone. A lot of times you see that spin as a hitter, and you want to lay off this pitch, but the chance of getting it, strike three. Smokey ends behind the plate. Scott Merritt, first base, Lyndon Baptiste at third tonight. Your men in blue. And here's Alyssa Washington with that Captain C on her chest. The first time in Texas history that they have chosen a captain. Ground ball to Taylor Paddle, two down. A lot of greats to come through Texas and the fact that She's now the first to wear that C. Not that there haven't been great Henry. captains in the past, whether they had the C or not, but just said a lot. It says a lot about her, what she's brought to this team. Well, I think, too, Mike White's trust in her with such a young lineup to have that voice, to have that pillar in the infield to turn to. As talented as the youngsters are, it's nice to have that veteran presence. Yeah, she said she's very calming. And Underclass can, can, you know, spin things out of control. She brings it back down. Henry laying down the butt. Safe at first. Infield single for Caden. Gosh, a beautiful speed. job of deadening this ball. And then you create chaos, right? Because you got pitcher and first base trying to go after this, which already creates a mix off. Once Pick Pickens gets it, already out of position. They're lucky she didn't get two bases with an overthrow there. Well, and that is one of the keys, right? Create the chaos. This is what Texas just does so well. They challenge you on every aspect of the game. Two out base runner for Ashton Maloney in that nine spot. Sophomore out of Liberty, Missouri. Redshirt with a knee injury in 2022 and then last year burst on the scene. Spent time playing all three outfield positions. Out right field tonight. Throw down to Rodriguez, but the runner was oh, that's trotting back to first. That's the best as a base runner. When you get that aggressive three steps, and you can fake a throw like that, it rarely happens, especially Division One. But just like you said, create some chaos. That ends up being an overthrow. You're already on second base. to the top of the order. Top of the order for Texas, the center fielder, Bella Dayton. Dayton singled and scored back in the first on the Atwood double. Batting over 400 on the season. Saw her average go up 68 points last year. Big improvement for Bella. And that was playing through a wrist injury. She is healthy 100% this year. And in that tone setter spot. Look at the hitting for Texas with two outs. Mm -hmm. It's close to 500. will move up 60 feet. Two in scoring position now for Dayton. 
And the wild pitch. Pickens putting this one in the dirt. And Sophia Nugent just can't get down on that to keep it in front of her. Dayton's got far, five RBI through their first five games. And takes a look at strike two. strike swing. I mean, this is where Texas is so good. First, to get the runners on base with two outs, but then you add on two strikes, hit the ball hard. Yes, it is right to Bella Fa, but it's hit hard enough, takes that last hop. Probably go down as an error, but the point is the two strikes, putting that ball in play to make something happen. And this all happening with two outs, a walk, a wild pitch, now an error. And it's 2-0 Texas. Texas team is, you can just see they're hungry, a lot of fire. In fact, talking with Coach White, you know, he really thought that they did not play well against Tennessee and Supers. They should have won that series, and they've kind of been on fire since. Oh, and Smitty, you know this, right? You know, of course, how your season ends. You have a new team, you have new freshmen, but you yeah. circle on that calendar. You look <laughs> at exactly the team that knocked oh, you out, and you're like, heck oh, yes, yeah. we get them in February? Oh, yeah. Little, little chip. It's not a little, it's a big chip. Big chip. Big now chip. batting the third baseman, Mia Scott. Karen Weekly checking out her game book over there. Trying to work out of this jam. It's Mia Scott stepping in. Runners on the corners to face Pickens. Scott. Guys, that one out to Malloy in center under it for the third out, but another run in. Texas, including this Tennessee team, 23 different National Player of the Year preseason candidates. Taylor Panel, the sophomore, will step in. Top of the third, the 2-0 lead for Texas. This is one of a handful of fields around uh, the complex. Yes. This is the action going on elsewhere, including UCLA Georgia Dogs up 6-2 right now. Looks like Oklahoma State just picked up another dub. And uh, Minnesota leading Georgia Tech. That's the quad box. Mm -hmm. That is the quad box, you are correct. Reminds me of regionals. Uh, Oklahoma State, that went over Scotty tonight. Here on field eight, as the kids call it. The uh, Ocho. 10 straight strikes right now for Sitlali. Mm. Yeah, she's perfect in that second inning, seven for seven. Estelle Check is out in the bullpen. They, they spread their innings around for their pitching staff last week. That's also a word back to us, Sophia Simpson. Of course, when your offense is putting up 16 runs and 19 runs and 16 runs, uh, you can go a little deeper into your pen. 12 strikes in a row now. I bet you her ball strike breakdown is going to be pretty darn good. Oh, I'm looking at the oh, off the charts. It's, it's probably really, really off the charts, yeah. <laughs> Just hammering the zone. That drop ball has been so effective, mixing speeds. Working both sides and of the plate. And thus endeth the streak. Yes.
chopped down to third, bobbled by Scott. And Pamela is safe. Beauty of speed, just makes you get your feet going before you've got the ball. That's all Mia Scott did. She started to move her body before she had the ball. By the time she got it back, too late. It'll bring up Bella Fall, who had the error in the bottom half of the last inning, a chance to make amends. Tying run comes to the plate here for Tennessee. Out of Sugar Hill, Georgia. Top five recruit in the country coming out of high school. You gotta be awfully good to step right into the SEC and start at short. Gutierrez, the pitch count at 30, so she's been awfully efficient. Throwing a lot of those strikes. There's so many players coming back for Tennessee. Not a lot of opportunity to bust into the starting lineup, but she stressed with us this week when we talked to her, new team, new year, but we still are trying to work towards the same destination, which is Oklahoma City. And a strikeout for Gutierrez, one down. Gutierrez has just been so efficient tonight. She gets ahead 0-2 with a lot of drops on the outer half, then she runs 2-2 two and, two and then comes back on the inner part of the play picks up a strikeout third of the night just so precise with her locations tonight Kiki Malloy oh considering uh, dropping down the bunt I think weekly would rather the uh, national home run leader last year uh, take a poke at it try and tie it up four strikeouts I think earlier in the game usually that's a self call on a player yeah. you're just something to slow it down might not even be an intent to get it down Two and one. First team All-American last year. She was a member of the All-World Series team. Of course, her athletic family. Lawyer Malloy, who played in the NFL. Her sister, Amira, also played in the World Series at Washington. Mom was also a good athlete. And gloved by Scott. She'll go the short way to get the lead runner two down. The left fielder, Riley West. There's Riley West. Grounded back to the pitcher, first time up. Man, she is dotting. I mean, low and away. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a pretty cookie zone for these hitters. These right-handed batters like the pitch away, but she does such a great job that late break, kind of just off the plate getting those calls. In for a strike, the throw down. What a 
throw by Atwood. Reese Atwood, first with the bat, getting the low on our Reese. St. Pete Clearwater. Pounding out the clutch hits. And here is Katie Stewart. It's Stewart, Atwood, and Martinez. Three, four, five, do up. A run in the first, another run in the second for Texas. And then Reese Atwood just threw out Kiki Malloy trying to steal. Last year, Kiki was 39 for 40. Only got chucked once. So kudos to Atwood there. She's also got an RBI. Picking so far, a couple of strikeouts, a walk. That was her 35th pitch of the night, hitting low 70s. 39th pitch of the night. Good leverage count for Stewart. See what the freshman can do. Good take. Lead off base runner. And that's not what you're looking for with Atwood coming up. Now batting the catcher, Reese Atwood. You're getting Karen Weekly off her stool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love how her game book is labeled Karen's game book. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's great. All right, so here's Atwood, the RBI double over the right fielder's head in the first inning. She did it on a pitch, actually up and in, kept her hands inside of it. And drove it out to right field. See the first pitch here. They went low and away. Plays off the high heat. Two and up. Reese is only hitting 700 this season with runners on base. Got to pick that up. Don't know what happened the other three yeah. times. So. <laughs> <laughs> a rocket but caught short by Thaw. And diving back in safely is Stewart, one down. Well, even when Atwood is out, she is tattooing the ball. I mean, she's just seeing everything the like a beach ball down. this year. Viviana Martinez. I just love her swing because it's, it's so level. We talk a lot about kind of swing pass. You see how short flat because of that she's very consistent here's martinez a strikeout victim her first time up Great pitch. We haven't seen Pickens go to her glove side a lot. Inside a lefty. We've seen it a lot away, away, away to lefties. So that's a really good location to establish the inside pitch. Swing and a miss for Pickens. That's strikeout number three, two down. They got her striking out the last You're time, coming low and in, and here just riding inside on the hands. And this is the difference between Pickens this year, is being able to establish that part of the plate for lefties. Not just be arm side, be able to come to that glove side, does it perfectly there. Jolie Mitchell. And the runner will be able to advance on the pass ball. RBI opportunity for Jolie. Yeah, tough top for Nugent behind the dish, but remember it was also that wild pitch last inning that moved the runners up that allowed that second run to score. 
Moving up again. Well, it looks like that was scored a wild pitch and probably this one too. So that would be three yep. here in the first three innings. How about Katie Stewart though? I mean, this is a freshman anticipating because both of these pitches didn't get by. They still stayed in front, but she knew as soon as that ball was in the dirt, this isn't a ton of speed on the base pass, but it's smart base running. You see that jump right there. As soon as she saw it in the dirt, she's gone. All right, now the official score has uh, changed. Uh, the middle one back to a pass ball. So one pass ball, two wild pitches. Result is the same for Texas. You get to move up a bag. Mitchell, that'll stay fair, and that's off the hand of Pennell. They call it a foul ball on the bounce off the, off the by the plate. Possibly off the foot. Yeah. Because it was in fair territory, but it hits her front. Oh, yep. Ouch. There's a great look at it there. up on Rodriguez. She'll get the out at first, denying Texas a run. Mike White on the... You got five stud pitchers. We're seeing what Sit Lolly can do in the circle, but how do you decide, how do you assess within get the game? Oh, flip a coin. No, just, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's really a luxury to have, and, uh, you know, I'm, we're confident in all of them, and, um, you know, it's great to have Tegan Kavan on our squad right now. It adds a little more depth to it and a little something different as well, but, you know, they're all battling to see who can get the ball, so I love it. And coach, your offense coming into tonight's game hitting over 450. Why? I mean, <laughs> crazy. Well, hey, man, you try to get a good pitch to hit, and that's what they're doing. They're being pretty patient. Um, obviously, Pickens is throwing really hard right now. So, but uh, we've got the lead, and just I keep throwing up zeros. I hope. All right, thank you, Mike. Awesome. Hey, thank thanks. Hook them. Yeah. Thanks, coach. Well, Texas tonight, the team batting. Look at that, two and six, two for six no, with two outs. Your outs. Scoring runs in the first and the second innings. And Gutierrez, just the two hits allowed, has struck out three. And back to work against the bottom of the Texas order. As the Longhorns try and improve to 6-0 and oh on the season. A terrific start. That included a school record 64 runs scored through five games. One of those wins was the 16-0 win over UCLA, the worst loss in Bruins history. They had some fun out in Southern California. And now trying to do the same in Florida. Out in front of the off speed. Riley West grounded out in the first. Set Lala varies those pitches just enough, even though most of them are on the outer half right now. She just will move one down. She'll bring it up a couple uh, balls. She'll attack the top of the zone, throw the off speed. One, two pitch to West. Pops her up. Oh, and that'll drop in fair. Was it touched before it ricocheted foul? And it appeared there it might have been Riley. a collision between West and Mitchell. I think the umpires are trying to decide whether or not that actually I think touched it Mitchell. I thought it hit Riley, but because if it did, she would be out. 
which would have been the craziest thing. Usually you see that call if they're coming out of the box like on a bunt, yeah. but to yeah. have your own fly ball possibly hit you. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know that we've ever seen. No, that's bad luck. Well, she's, yeah, and she's already touched first base. So does that matter? No, I, and I think it hit the defender first. So it did it hit? Did it hit her glove? It looked like no contact between the two. I don't know that it hit her glove. Oh, you're right. It could it just be a foul ball. This should be a good look. It oh. hit, I mean, it definitely hits right. It hit West. Yeah. I think she should be out, but she should be out by getting hit by her own pop up. Now batting the third baseman, McKenna. Oh, I hit her hand. Does it skid off the glove first? I don't think so. It's hard to tell. Yeah. Wow. It's one I haven't seen before. No. <laughs> That's why Mike White is arguing. There's no video review. Yeah, so I don't know how he wins this argument because it certainly appears like they were, umpires will allow West to stay at first. Oh, there was a, there's an umpire right there. So, I mean, if they didn't see it. And I don't see how you don't, it definitely hit Riley. I think the hardest thing is did it hit Julie Mitchell, the first baseman, right. first. So that's what he's at. Did it hit the runner? That's exactly what he's trying to confirm. Let's see. So that would be, uh, uh, as it stands, that score to hit a base hit, not a it hit me for Riley West. That's about as strange as it yes. gets right there. Yep. <laughs> Wild. You guys ever seen that? No. no. Only, like I said, out of the box, yeah. you know, never right. your own fly ball. And typically it's a, it's a bunt that you run into or. Yeah. Yeah. Or it hits a base runner, mm. but not your own ball. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> West hands appear to be okay. Here's Boo Gibson. Boo singled in the first. Time run at the plate. Gutierrez a good job on a 2-0 pitch coming back to that corner of hers that she likes to hammer on that outer half to all these righties. Two and two. Nice locate after hitting that outside corner, comes back underneath the hands. trouble with that pitch low and away. You're seeing it off the end of the bat. They're still trying to pull it. 
And I'll tell you what, they just faced Nyjah Kennedy, who was coming hard and in. So their swings right now are set up for get quick, open up those hips. And now they're seeing low and away. And you can see they're just spinning off it, Jess. And Sid Lolly will throw about 78% drop balls, about 20% changeup. Lily's just picked apart that outer half. Tennessee hitless so far with a runner on base. Gibson trying to change that. A deep blast back to the track and now circling back onto the grass for the catch for Caden Henry. One down. That ball hit a long way. First one off now the bat, I thought it was going out. I think it went higher than it went. Speed, and part of that is because the drop balls at Gutierrez, there it is, 48%, fastballs at 18%, rise ball at 10%. She will also throw her change-ups effectively as well. That one gets by Atwood, and Riley West over in the scoring position. That's a wild pitch. Chance tonight with a runner in scoring position for the Lady Vols. It's Sophia Nugent. Struck out on the drop ball in the first. That one dove down at her ankles, yeah. one and two. The bend on that pitch yes. is just amazing. Two different planes. It was like a screwball and a drop ball. Yeah. This is where they struggled, had their chances earlier tonight against Stanford. Just one of nine runners in scoring position in that one. You can see the way that they're spinning off everything, those foul balls that they're hitting. To that left side, you can see they're around everything. They're hitting the outside of the ball instead of letting that ball travel and hitting it inside out. Missed. She's been coming in, 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 and then just tries to dot it away. Tell you what, Tennessee hitters have been doing a good job of fouling off pitches, so though. I mean, they haven't gotten the big hit yet, but. They are definitely making Sit Lolly work. Especially in this fourth inning, she's done a lot of pitches. And there's a base knock out into left field, waving West around, and Texas won't even try for her at the plate. Tennessee's on the board. RBI single, Nugent. Saw her fall off so many pitches in, away. And this is a mistake left up in the zone. We've seen that beautiful drop, that spin that goes down. This one hangs up, and Nugent takes advantage. Hardest hit ball we've seen from Tennessee to get him on the board. Boy, and remember, West was. This is how the inning started. The infield pop-up that appears to hit West on the hand right there. Now, it was ruled a player, single. Zeta Mike White Queen. argued for quite some time, trying to argue that it hit her and she should be out. Zeta Pooney brings the go-ahead run to the plate. Wrapped right back up the middle. Oh, oh, oh. To Washington, the backhand to first, and there's 
saying the runner was safe at second base. Did she miss the bag? Oh, man, because this was a sweet play. The bare hand. I mean, she had me out of my chair. Watch her grab this bare hand. She's out. Whoa, not even close. Yeah. Her foot is on the bag. I mean, <laughs> this is a great play. Are they saying she was juggling it with her foot off the base or something here? I mean, her foot, but she's got it right there. Yeah. And she's got to get out of the way. Yeah, that's that's an out. And there's no replay review. Oh, that's a fantastic play. Yeah. Well, the umpire set up behind, too, so if he's thinking he's seeing her juggle it, but yeah. Well, I mean, got to get in a better position. I know. I know. She always give the benefit of the doubt yeah. there to ask for help. Yeah. So you've heard of Pac-12 after dark getting a little crazy. Now Clearwater after dark getting a little funky out there. Tennessee was able to cash in on one break this inning. Can they get another one? Here's Rodriguez. and a runner at second. Scott's playing a little deep over there at third. So this ball going off the end of the bat for Rodriguez. And it's just going to be a tough play for Mia Scott. She's going to charge it, but I like her decision to yes. hold it. That's all you can do. Credit to Destiny, too. Man, she got down that line as fast yeah. as she could. Pinch running for Tennessee at first base, number 88, Amanda Allen. Now batting the first baseman, Julia Cutler. Chat with Tennessee's head coach, Karen Weekly. Bottom half of the inning. Amanda Allen is the pinch runner over at first base. Rodriguez can re-enter. Here's Julia Katsoyanopoulos. Grounded into a double play in the second. Scott with time over to first. Ends the threat, but a run in for Tennessee. Karen Duan, Texas over Tennessee, joined now by Karen Weekly. And coach, what kind of adjustments have you had your offense have to make after seeing Nyjah Kennedy at 60 to 9 to 74 <laughs> miles an hour inside and now a lot of drops outside? Apparently not enough. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, we faced Gutierrez last year in Supers. We know what she's going to do. And I'm a little frustrated with her standing in there taking strikes early, right where we know she's going to put them. You've talked a lot about Carlin Pickens in her sophomore season, kind of owning herself. What have you liked from her so far? Yeah, I think Carlin has these at-bats that are just brilliant. I think it's just a matter of her learning how to move the ball around a little bit better and especially use, you know, off the plate a little bit better. Um, some of those hard-hit balls are, you know, 
we want her to go a little bit off, try to get some chases, and we're just catching too much play. But she's learning every day, and that's what I love about her. Is she's so receptive to getting better and open to coaching, and, you know, the sky's the limit for her. Thank you very Thank much, you. Karen. Thank Thanks, you. Coach. We appreciate that. One of her former players, Sarah Feckety, going into the uh, Tennessee Hall of Fame this spring. There's a look at some of the numbers for UT. Pickens, three innings of work, the three hits with three strikeouts. One of the uh, two Texas runs has been earned tonight. Seven, eight, nine coming up. Here's Alyssa Washington grounded out her first time up. Hard Ooh. hit to Bella Fogg. Nice off the one hop and one down. Don't forget, as you're enjoying your softball action this season, there is a new pitch clock. Uh, this one the provided by Whistle Henry. Stop. 20 seconds between pitches. And the first 10 seconds of that, the pitcher has to be on the pitching rubber. The batter has to be in the batter's box. And then they have to beat the clock to get that pitch to the batter. Base knock through the left side for Caden Henry, her second single of the night. I love it. Her first at bat, she lays down a beautiful drag bun, brings in the corners, and then this one, all you got to do is get enough because they were playing her shallow. You watch right there, Boo Gibson creeping in, now just poking it right past her. Ashton Maloney. Ashton Maloney will step in. Thought about the bunt. Base hit, this one through the right side. Two on with one out, top of the order. Well, it's interesting, the defensive alignment, the Christine Rodriguez, the second baseman, look at where she's going to be at. She's up the middle, and this ball's just going to be blasted through that three, four hole, a step, right? Crossover, and just punches it through that hole. And that's great recognition for Ash and Maloney. She stepped out of the batter's box, too. Should have been out. Fielder, Bella Dayton. Chance now for Texas, so they get a break to go their way this half inning. Dayton has reached twice, once on a base hit, once on an error. A lot of times you think it's the top of the lineup, you've got so much power, but at the bottom of the lineup yeah. for Texas just creates so much chaos, so much havoc. Runner goes and sliding in safely at third is Henry. And right behind her, Maloney will move up a bag. And that's a design play. Yeah, this is the classic show bunt to be able to bring in the third baseman, make Bella Fa have to come over. They're lucky this did end up in left field. Fa just barely getting over there. No chance at a play, but almost ended up past her. Yeah, and you almost bait the catcher into making that throw because it is a left-handed hitter, so she's got that lane wide open. Infield in, they'll make the play at home. Rodriguez with the throw, and they got her. Henry out at the plate, two down. That is a great job by Rodriguez in that second base position, knowing that anything right side is going to be an opportunity for Texas to try to score. She takes on the high hop, no hesitation, bullet to Nugent. Gets the ball, comes down, and is able to block the plate. The leading edge of the plate is open. Oof. Oh. I don't know. Did she get in there? But that is the question. She had her foot there, and it's almost like she moved her body away. Once you have the ball, you are allowed to block the plate. Once that leading edge is open, that is the term. Boy, that angle looked like that foot might have gotten in first. The tag ends up being applied up on the backside.
Well, that's a tough break for, for Texas there. I'm actually surprised at that tag because she had plenty of time. The way she moved her body, she almost moved her body away from the plate because the ball was there before. She was blocking the plate and then she slid around and left the lane open. Yep. First ends the threat. Defense holds for Tennessee down two to one. The weather works with us. Some big matchups tomorrow night, but uh, make sure you stay posted on the ESPN.com app for all the latest updates. Get some alerts on your phone. We do have some bad weather expected to uh, hit this area in the next couple of days. Totally Smitty's fault. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's El Nino. <laughs> Base hit. <laughs> Taylor Panel gets things started as we uh, do the split screen here. Stanford and Texas, uh, excuse me, uh, Minnesota and Georgia Tech on your right. I think Minnesota's trying to end it, and Georgia Tech is trying to extend it. Yep, 11 to seven right now in the top of the seventh. Man, if we see some high scores. Wow. <laughs> Holy smokes. Yeah. For Tennessee at first base, number one, Katie Taylor. I love this. We get to watch all the softball games. Showed you the quad box earlier. It's pretty cool. I mean, all of us growing up with travel softball and, you know, playing on multiple fields, and that's what the facility here brings. You love softball. It is everywhere here. <laughs> <laughs> Great environment. Swing and the miss. Bella Faw. Time run aboard here for Tennessee on the left side of your screen. I like it when they time it so the pitches aren't at yeah. the same time. Yeah. I can focus on that pitch, I can focus on left pitch, right pitch, left pitch. We control that. <laughs> and go. It's like when you're bowling next to someone, right? <laughs> One lane at a time. Can't go at the same time. <laughs> what? <laughs> bowling, etiquette. 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 <laughs> okay, now you can go. Deep into the hole. Martinez fires the first, got her. This is a great play. We have seen some awesome defense. And I love when you see the middles be able to come on over for Vivi Martinez, all your weights going to third baseline in the throw, yeah, be able to get enough. A lot of times you see that on a one hop. She gets that in the air, enough time. Well, good over at first, just comes into the game. That's a great stretch, making that long throw. Connecting it, connecting those dots. But for the second time wow. tonight, Kiki Malloy attempts a bunt. I get it, honestly. And a lot of times it's not to lay down the bunt, it's because you've got a lot going on in your head. You know you had four strikeouts earlier, you haven't connected yet in this game, you're just trying to track. Of course, Karen's probably like, no, 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 no. we want you to hit. <laughs> Did not check the swing 0-2 for Kiki who uh, is 0 for 6 on the day. Just out of sorts so far today for Malloy. Two down. Well, a real open stance, that front leg real open, and they're attacking her on the outer half. This is a curveball. 
It's just running away from her. Malloy is just opening up, spinning off a lot of these pitches. Last year, she would have let that travel and would have hit it deep the opposite way. And you could just see that front shoulder flying just a little bit. Charlie West fouls off the first pitch. Two down with that tying run out at second base here for Tennessee. Singled and scored in that uh, quirky infield pop-up in the fourth inning. I think we have a rule clarification, right? It passes a fielder yep. and hits your, I mean, the fact that I'm even saying this, the batter that hit the ball passes the fielder <laughs> and it hits you. I mean, if I see that again in a lifetime, I mean, yeah. That is so rare, but it is allowed. It's a fair ball. And that will drop just foul outside the line. That would have tied it up. Last year's SEC Coach of the Year with over a thousand wins. I think they're looking up the rule book, and that young lady is saying, "I bet you Taylor Swift knows what the rule is." <laughs> well, she's in Australia right now, back on tour. Right back to Gutierrez, and that ends the threat. With our first kept Tennessee's big hitters at bay. Three, four, five are due up as we go back to the split screen. And uh oh, don't look now, but Georgia Tech is uh, coming back on Minnesota. If my math is right, that is the tying run at the plate. Still with two outs here in the top of the seventh. Oh, nice change. for a strike. Both of them. <laughs> Times two. <laughs> and now uh, on the right side of your screen there, Georgia Tech down to its final strike. Strike out of the night for Pickens. I love the energy at the end of the pitch. Just continuing to hammer that strike zone. Elevated pitch almost looks like the rotation on that is just a high fastball and just locating it. Picking that upper quadrant. Reese Atwood, RBI double in the first, lined out to short in the third. toughest hitters to get out. And that's saying something here in Clearwater because everybody yeah. is hitting. But she has just been absolutely tearing the cover off the ball. All parts of the field. You kind of see it in her swag, too. She, I mean, the way she's kind of carrying herself, getting back in the batter's box, you can tell she's aggressive. She wants to hit. And as a hitter, when you're feeling it like this, we can't wait to get back in that box. She has uh, now started out the season on a six game hitting streak with that hit earlier, but another strikeout for Pickens back to back. 
Number five on the night for Carlin. Two oh, down. That, that's the first strikeout of the year for now Atwood. This down. pitch, Viviano outer Martinez. half, really good spin on that. And I think Reese is figuring out, well, how did I miss that? Because it's looking as big as a beach ball to her. You're right, <laughs> she does have that swagger. Pickens starting to work that corner a little better. Oh, look what happened just a moment ago. A home run for Georgia Tech uh, to tie oh, the game in the seventh inning to their last strike. Elevens tied it up. My wow. goodness. Love that. Look at the excitement. Eileen Morales, the head coach. Holy smokes. Have we seen some scores? Mm. Putting up some big numbers. A four-run seventh inning after Minnesota scored three times in the bottom of the sixth. Vivi Martinez on the left. Hand side screen, it's two strikeouts. Carlin Pickens has really owned her on the inner half. Let's see if Vivian makes any adjustments. Carlin Pickens striking out the side in the bottom of the fifth. Carlin Pickens, the sophomore, really throwing the lead. Six hits, they've left four on base. Texas, five hits tonight, they've left six on board. And after Carlin Pickens struck out the side in the bottom of the fifth, back to work for Sitlali. Facing Gibson, go, Taylor, and Pooney. Deep in the hole with short, Martinez. One down. So we told you about that inclement weather that's headed our way tomorrow. As a result, there's been some changes to the schedule, and there will now be games at 9 a.m. Eastern that were scheduled for 10. So they're going to try and move some games up to beat the weather. So that's how things look in that first window, including Florida State, Georgia, now at 9 a.m. on ESPN2. Extra coffee morning. A mm, little Saturday brunch for you. Actually, that's probably still in the breakfast window. For sure. <laughs> For college might be, students. Might be late night leaving yeah. the club out on the West Coast. Now we know what Beth does on her nah, Friday nights. <laughs> yeah, there once was a day. Now I'm lucky to see the sunset. <laughs> Two out to Nugent, who has re-entered after Katie Taylor went in to play right field for that last half inning. RBI single in the fourth. You may recall at the top of the broadcast, we teased how many runs were being scored and how many home runs were being hit so far in Clearwater. The uh, Texas and Tennessee pitchers did not get the memo on that. <laughs> they have been stingy. <laughs> I like a little classic softball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two to one game. Got to earn your hits. Sure. Good defense. Not a lot of strikeouts until Pickens struck out the side last <laughs> inning. <laughs> Getting better as she goes. And there's a base hit. Nugent, second single. When all you're getting is drop balls knee high and below, Nugent. This is kind of where we've seen pretty much all of Tennessee's hits. Find those holes, whether it's 5-6, 3-4. Between shortstop and third base there. 
Tennessee now with the leadoff on base in each of the last four innings. And an error, a single, a single, and another single. Pooney looked a little off balance on that swing. Nine, nine ground balls. I mean, Lolly, she's just rolling the 100 hoppers. Hardly anything up in the air. A line drive that was doubled off. Two to Pooney. Two down. So many weapons. Well, especially when you get hitters thinking down and then you get them chasing down. Because right now, you could tell Zeta Pooney, she's looking neat. She was hunting drop balls. Gutierrez recognizes that, goes even lower to get the swing and miss. Yeah, and that's an off-speed drop ball, and so it blends very well with her regular drop. And so you think, oh, I'm going to go attack that. And it the bottom falls out of it. Reminder, we told you about the schedule change. More games moving up in the morning for, for Texas and Tennessee fans who ha still have games scheduled for later in the day tomorrow. You are encouraged to go to the Shriners Children's Clearwater Invitational website to check on when and if those games can be played with a lot of rain expected tomorrow. So just keep that in mind and keep that Website handy. Two to one, Texas. The order here for Texas. Leanne Good. game with both teams scoring in double figures. And now down to their final strike on the right side of your screen there. Minnesota, or excuse me, a chance to win it here. Minnesota at the plate. That'll do it. It's a walk off. It's a walk off. Golden Gophers celebrate 12 to 11 over Georgia Tech. Their, their first win here in Clearwater. We have seen some fun finishes, awesome games. Like day two. All right, that'll take care of that game for you. And after Good walked to reach first, here's Alyssa Washington. 0 for 2, a couple of ground outs. She's feeling the drama right now, the intrigue. Oh, Washington thought that was up and in on her. 0 and 2. with just five hits tonight, but they've done a good job of creating chaos every single inning, except for the last where Pickens struck out the side. 
Pop up so over go. towards the dugout and caught. Panel takes care of it, one down. In the top of the seventh, by the way, the last chance for Tennessee, the uh, seven, eight, and nine batters would be due up. Of course, the eight and nine hitters for Texas, that, that's where they've done some damage. They got three of their five hits. Good, rambles around, thought about third, will hold at second. That's the third wild pitch for Pickens. And they've been costly. They've, yep. Both sides. Yeah. They've helped uh, Texas play to run. Thought checks the runner, goes to first and safe. Good speed for Henry down the line. That's the third time she's reached base. Her third hit, and she has utilized speed. Her first a bad drag bunt. Second one poke one through, and here just this slight hesitation to look the runner back. Smitty, you talked about it. The bottom of this order has a lot of speed, a lot of creativity. And they've been the offense for Texas. Yeah, and that's just, you know, fought, shortstop, young, not knowing your opponent, and, and sometimes you don't early in the season. You don't know how quick they're going to get down well, the line. You can line. look her back literally yeah. with your eyes. You don't have to do it with right. your whole body. There's Ashton Maloney. Drops down a beaut of a bunt. They'll get her at first, but the sacrifice pushes two Longhorns into scoring position. And this Texas team can move. Everybody is fast, which creates that chaos that we talked about for the defense. Chance here for Bella Dayton. Has reached all three times, including once with a single back in the first and scored. Looking for some cushion here on the scoreboard. Two for nine tonight with a runner in scoring position. But as a team this year, hitting 443 with two outs. Which is pretty amazing, because coming in they were hitting like 458, which means <laughs> that their batting average with two outs is as good as their batting average. I mean, it's typically not the case. Yeah. So effective for Pickens last year. Those are the two strikes in this at bat, both been on the changeup. Reaches out for it, and Rodriguez has it at second. Couple left on. Last chance coming up, though, in the seventh inning for Tennessee. Can sit Lolly. Plan your escape at visit stpeteclearwater.com. Lovely evening here in Clearwater. As we go to the top of the seventh, Tennessee has three outs to work with to try and tie it up or take the lead. First pitch swinging, good scoop at third by Mia Scott, one down. Nice play, Mia Scott cutting that off, not letting it get to Vivi Martinez, a shortstop to make it potentially a tight play at first. Look at the way she's gonna break right toward the pitcher's circle, and that is just perfect play by the third baseman. Nice short hop, pops it up. Great leadership. Taylor panel. Right. 
Gutierrez has just been so good. 73% strike, 17 swing and miss, nine ground outs, has not given up a free pass, has made Tennessee earn everything. And when you do that, it is, it's hard to score. That's a pinch hitter on deck, Lauren Mueller. And Smitty, we've seen here that ground outs or ground balls don't necessarily translate to outs. I mean, there's been a lot of errors these first two days. So you give a lot of credit, nine ground outs, because the defense mm -hmm. behind Sit Lolly has been amazing. Absolutely. Panel reached on an error in the third, singled in the fifth. Texas is scheduled to be back at it tomorrow afternoon at uh, 2 o'clock no against North Carolina. And then tomorrow night, back here on Longhorn against Kentucky. But a reminder to check your lo local listings. Check the Clearwater Invitational website because we are expecting some inclement weather tomorrow that could mess with the schedule. Been a beautiful first two days, yes. though. Yes. I'm enjoying the sunshine. <laughs> Getting a little grouper sandwich. <laughs> Down the beach. Off the end of the back. Hoodie's getting out a little, a little chill, a little chill in the air. Yeah, it's 65. <laughs> <laughs> Sitlali with another strike at that six, two down. Sitlali expanding the zone. This is a curve ball, it's going away. Just good late sharp break. And really the key though is where she puts that on the corner. So she'll put it on the corner, let it run. Really quality pitching performance tonight from Sit Lolly. Makes you wonder, next game coming up against Stanford. Who, yeah. Who's going to be uh, coming out of that? Starting and coming out yeah. of the. Uh, That's 9 o'clock Eastern, by the way, tonight on ESPN2, Texas and Stanford. It's going to be a good one. Stanford, good one against Tennessee before this game. They did have to bring Kennedy out of the bullpen in the first inning, so I don't know who the card will throw. I'll tell you what, Texas has their entire staff warm because they've all been down yeah. there throwing <laughs> this entire game. That's a, those are pretty good numbers right there. Tennessee down to its final strike and in jeopardy of losing back-to-back -back games in about a four-hour stretch here. job of getting her star player right now who has been struggling and you see that smile on her face this is where Karen Weekly does a great job just getting her to relax because she is in her head she feels the pressure she knows what she is and what she's capable of but right now just getting back to being herself she is 0 for 7 in these two games today with five strikeouts but a resume well first team all-american and she is 
tied for their career home run lead with 57 for her career. Last year, she was tops in the nation with 25. And boy, would this be a moment for her. Family looking on. And it's her fourth time seeing Gutierrez tonight. Chopped to short, this could do it, over to first, in time. Gutierrez holds Malloy in check, and that'll end it, two to one. Texas a winner over Tennessee. Great team win for Texas. Lolly Gutierrez sitting down some great bats at Tennessee with some good defense behind her. Number three beats number two tonight, their first top two win in a while. Coming up, Texas baseball, and then over on ESPN2 tonight, Texas Stanford softball.